Hello everyone, Gary Pike here. This is the first of a series of short videos uh, with some things that have come to mind across my desk that I thought were really of interest for long-term thinking about planning on any one of our farms. So let's get started here. Uh, talked a bit about the, uh, the farm optimizer and I think it's your key to enterprise analysis and in times of change Learners inherit the earth while the others find themselves equipped to deal with the world that had no longer exists. I think that's a really careful thing that's happening right now as we speak. And you know, I, I know that history guides a lot of the decisions on your farm. Uh, the world is changing. Crops are changing. Subsidies are changing. And I want you to think of Farm Optimizer as a learning tool. So let's get to one of those changes. Russia is going to be the world's largest wheat exporter and it's uh hasn't been here for many many years and it's really cementing its position it's a lot closer coming out of that black sea region than we are to a lot of fairly major uh markets of ours as in north america's and they're going to cause some problems and if you want to see how quickly they're growing, because a lot of the reports around are indicating, you know, there's a lot of concerns as to whether or not they can get it out the door. Uh, go to AGI, Ag Growth International, a company out of Winnipeg, that's, uh, go to their installations page and look at the number of pictures of large terminals that have been put up in Russia or in the Black Sea region. This is a Canadian outfit. This doesn't include everybody else in the world that's over there building as well. So this is happening. And there's a lot of installations in progress. These guys are going to be a major, major contender. And I think we need to think about it. For more information on that, go to this link. It's a Reuters story. I think it's very good. Uh, again, it, 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 what it, the last part of the title is it could be worse. Well, they're not here in full force yet but things are changing and I mean it was 89 when the wall came down and I can remember talking about that and saying how we were gonna have to deal with this at some time in the future I guess none of us really predicted how long it would take but here we are almost to 2018 and now we're gonna have to deal with it and it's gonna make us change because we aren't necessarily gonna be the most competitive where we are Right now, uh, when we look at the wheat market in particular, another link here that you could go to, and uh, just in a nutshell, what it says is that China is sitting on an awful lot of wheat. And so when you look at stocks to use ratio, which means how much do we already have for next year's needs in place, uh, counting that Chinese piece, it's roughly 33%. Well, at 33%, uh, they're holding the most of anybody, even with them out, it's still 23%. We all know that when stocks to use ratios get over 20, prices are going to remain soft. And they could be soft for a considerable length of time. And with Russia coming on the way it has, we have to think differently about where crop failures take place. Because they're using your and my technology. And so they're moving forward at a much faster pace than they would have been, say, 15 years ago. So this is something you got to really keep in the back of your mind when you're doing that planning. Now, if you're in the U.S., uh, this is sort of an interesting picture of what the U.S. Farm Bill looks like and where the money's being spent. And you'll note that the nutrition assistance, which is the blue lines on top, has just been steadily ramping up. This is a school lunch program and food stamps. But if you'll notice, the farm commodity programs, conservation, and every conservation has been on a, a slight increase since the, year, the last 15 years. The other ones in the last three have been shrinking. And this is, means that this will be the fourth year in a row that a lot of farms growing corn are not making a whole pile of money. So this program is due to be rewritten this year, and I'm not sure what it's going to do or... Trump is not, uh, does not seem friendly to huge amounts of subsidies to anybody. He'd rather make it more competitive. Going to have to really think long and hard about this. And, of course, what, what you need to think about on any of these things is not what somebody's going to seed. It's what they're not going to seed or plant. So keep that in mind. 
So what do I do on my farm? Well, you got to get the numbers. And, and of course, I'm biased. I would say put it, run it through Farm Optimizer and see where you are. Find out what you can improve on. Use the performance tools and figure it out. The big thing is what are those alternatives going to look like? And wheat is a toughie. Wheat is a real toughie because we're short on any real grass that makes a lot of money. So we got to look to some alternatives. I've seen uh, in the past, in the 80s when we were in this, was the first start of coriander becoming a crop. There were a number of spices. Now, everybody can't do this. But it's, as usual, uh, the first guys in are the first ones who grow it, learn how to grow it. Then they're selling seed. They do really well. And by that time, the market gets flooded and the conventional commodity guy gets slaughtered. So... You need to be thinking as to, okay, are there other things I can do here? Think outside the box and replace it. And I'm not even against, uh, in some locations, if you could grow hay, you maybe want to take a look at those numbers. Think outside the box because there are other alternatives to wheat that will work quite well. And I mean, we're hearing now in Iowa that they're growing chickpeas. There's lots of varieties of chickpeas elsewhere in the world that will do just fine in certain areas. And those plant proteins are very important. And as you've seen here, uh, I mean, you, you still need to get keep in rotation. And peas are something different. Uh, need to think maybe even the triticale and seeing who's sending triticale into some of these milling markets. Try and find other alternatives. Maybe it's the malt barley, barley thinking of cereals that you can grow outside the box that you haven't grown and yet minimizing risk. So watch the malt one, need to be very careful. So with that, uh, I think you need to really examine everything that you can make work under these conditions. I mean, you've got the land, you got the equipment, and unfortunately you probably have some debt as well. Got to put all of that in there and do what's necessary to make things go forward. And in many cases, that means those fixed costs have got to be kept under control. And we can address that in the software. So with that, I think uh, just keep evaluating those options. There's 10 seeds in an apple, but how many apples are in a seed? We need to learn how to grow and create that organization on all of our farms of learning and listening and looking abroad. Dr. Google has probably provided us with a better means of doing that investigation than anything else. And as you get down to doing that, uh, you will find that there are people, and I mean, there's less and less farmers every year, but the guys who are left are a tough bunch of businessmen and they are willing to share. A lot of them can be very helpful. And that's the kind of people we want to work with. So it's time for more. I want you to get your planning on, planning hat on now that we're hitting the down season. And uh, take care. Farm safely. Thank you.